two pan cams for high resolution color images and black and white cameras for navigation and hazard avoidance. The whole thing has to work together as an integrated whole and how well one of my instruments, the mini test works, is going to depend on how big the solar arrays are. Mini tests gives the rovers superhuman vision using infrared energy to identify rocks from far away. How well I'm going to get moss power data from one of my spectrometers is going to depend on how good the thermal system is. Two sophisticated sensors use radiation to identify elements and minerals, fine-tuned for those associated with iron and water. A rock abrasion tool is the equivalent of a geologist's rock hammer. And a microscopic imager functions like a hand lens. And it's all so tied up together that if you just focus on your little part of the puzzle and you ignore the rest of it, the overall science quality is going to suffer. And it's just because this thing is so integrated. Pre-launch, the scientists and engineers committed to building rovers that would survive for 90 days on Mars, traveling 600 meters, studying eight locations. Informally, they called this the warranty period. Spirit's first drive on Mars was a mere rotate in place to avoid driving over bunched up airbags. But both scientists and engineers were anxious to hit the road. Looks like most of the real interesting stuff is uh, kilometers away. So I'm really petitioning hard to get off the lander and let's drive, let's go. Let's put the belt to the metal and get her going. Spirit's drive up to a rock called Adirondack came to a crashing halt with a computer glitch that halted communications for several days before engineers resolved the problem. Well, I think I can say this morning with as much certainty as we can say anything here that our patient is healed. Then the second twin was delivered to Mars. With spirit recovering and one safe landing behind them, the team were somewhat more relaxed about opportunities entry, descent, and landing. Once again, success all the way down. As soon as the first images came back, it was clear that Opportunity had scored what one scientist called an interplanetary holding one. And we have a report that the data is flowing. Flight thermal, flight imaging. In their very first hours on Mars, members of the science team started seeing sediment, layers, outcrop, Features they thought they'd be lucky to find after weeks of travel. This is the sweetest spot I've ever seen. Right here's Rob. It's an outcrop. It's definitely an outcrop. Exposed and layered bedrock, never seen on Mars before, but now just meters from the lander, might begin to reveal the history of water at this place and indicate whether it could ever have been habitable. This is a bonus. We didn't know that we would run into outcrop, but as, as soon as you see outcrop out the front of the rover, then that becomes a primary uh, goal of the mission, is to understand what role has water played in the formation. And for this local piece of Mars real estate, the outcrop is going to help us to answer those things. To have an outcrop on a planet is a gift. It means a treasure trove. An outcrop on any other planet has never really been studied. That outcrop in the distance is just out of this world. I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I got nothing else to say. I just want to look. The Opportunity Science team spent their first days on Mars trying to figure out exactly what good fortune had given them. You'd see another uh, set of lineaments going. John Grotzinger and Andy Knoll were new to space missions and new to Mars, but both were experienced field geologists on Earth. They thought they were seeing some very familiar shapes, sedimentary layers. The team used 3D glasses to better understand the geometry of the rocks in front of them and to come up with a strategy to attack their scientific questions. You know, when you do field geology on Earth, what you do is you get to a site, you climb the highest locations to look around, you walk around to see what's there. You take notes of the most interesting stuff, and you'll come back and hit it in detail. We used the pan cams to do a survey of the outcrop before we approached it and studied it in great detail. 
So we had high resolution across almost the entire range of the outcrop and we could go in, people like John Grotzinger and Andy Knoll could go in and identify, hey, this area has the potential to have some